Hi, I'm Sean McCourt. And I'm Anthony Galdi from Behind the Emerald Curtain. We bring you behind the scenes to learn about the inner workings of Wicked. Today we're exploring the scenic design of Wicked, starting off with the famous Time Dragon. Join us as we explore its fascinating journey from conception to creation. The story of the dragon has a really rich history, actually, dating back to the early concept model that Eugene brought in when he first met with Joe Mantello. Wicked, you know, has one big overall clock motif that kind of pulls it together in the book uh, that, that this musical is based on. There's a clock of the time dragon, which is kind of described uh, as a kind of pageant wagon that's pushed around from town to town. And perched on top of this pageant wagon, was a leathery and sulfurous dragon that kind of, you know, was manipulated through ropes and pulleys like a marionette. Like a big puppet with stage hand and worked it with ropes and stuff. As soon as I read that, I thought, that's perfect. We brought in a great collaborator of ours, Bob Flanagan, who Eugene has worked with for many, many years on Saturday Night Live. One day Eugene stopped me in the hallway at Saturday Night Live and said, oh, I have my head some project for you to work on, and started going on about this 40-foot mechanical dragon. He showed me some of the Oz sketches and he asked me to kind of come up with some kind of huge metallic dragon that made serpentine movements and mouth open and closed and wings flapped. Basically, Eugene came to me and told me that the concept was um, we saw the machinations behind the Land of Oz. It's part of a kind of mechanical world. That was kind of my thought. Uh, so it fit into that, had, uh, you know, little hinges and little fabric. Seeing the stage hands over to the side yanking on the ropes, it kind of did two things. It gave us the movement that we wanted, and it also had the look that Eugene was, was asking for. You get his input, but you also are left alone to help bring your own creative forces into the project, which is a really nice feeling, because you don't always get that collaboration. Always the best thing. People said, well, could it smoke a little bit? It's a dragon, after all. Can you have some smoke? We have an elaborate system of hoses and machines that are housed within the dragon's head and his neck to be able to produce the smoke effects every time the dragon is activated. The dragon had to be very lightweight, and it also could not clatter and knock. So basically, we ended up using a sheet uh, urethane foam that's kind of like the, that goes on the inside of your coolers and stuff. We glued it together and it was fine. It was white though. So then we ended up putting a styrene coating and fabric on top of it and painting it to look like metal. The whole dragon only weighs about 40 pounds. The importance of the dragon for us really is that it, it does start the show. It's the downbeat of the music. It's the first visual effect. When I first saw it moving on stage, it really did, it really did kind of all come together. I was like, yeah, okay, that, that's, I understand it now. The dragon was used very successfully. I, I mean, it's, it's playful in the beginning, uh, uh, but nobody wanted it. They didn't want it originally. I don't know why. I can't remember why. I, I remember they weren't too keen on the dragon. They love it now, actually, I'm told. Uh, so 